Good morning. This month, we celebrate the contributions of African Americans to the history of America and pay tribute to these trailblazers, pioneers, heroes, and leaders. As my fellow Jamaican Marcus Garvey famously wrote, a people without knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. So while Black History Month is focused on the achievements and contributions of African Americans, it is important to note that African American history is the history of all Americans. The people we celebrate this month are all Americans and the events happened in America. However, because they have largely been left out of the American history books and are not taught in our schools, February is the month designated to bring awareness to some of this lost history. One of the titans of American history, African American history, is the Congressman John Lewis. Some of you may be aware of his famous quote, to never be afraid to make some noise and get into good trouble, necessary trouble. People like Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, and John Lewis made good trouble in the name of progressive social change and resistance to oppression. And in doing so, they risked arrest and often their lives. So today I honor the memory of Congressman Lewis by exploring the concept of good trouble. This quote from Congressman Lewis has inspired me to ask myself, what have I done over the course of my life to get into good trouble when the moment requires it? In considering this question, I can say that during my life, I have gotten in some good trouble in a meaningful way, albeit not the kind of trouble that got Congressman Lewis arrested, spit on, his head bashed in, and his blood shed on the Edmund Pettus Bridge to fight against racism and injustice. But during my tenure in corporate America, I think I made some good trouble speaking truth to power in the organization where I worked regarding the lack of diversity and the need to take bold steps to ensure equal employment opportunity for people of color in the areas of hiring, promotion, and retention. One of the things I convinced the people in power to do was to hold recruiters and hiring managers accountable by making diversity and inclusion a performance objective for everyone in the organization. Those who made progress as demonstrated by the metrics in their performance reviews were rewarded accordingly. Some others who were either unwilling or unable to demonstrate progress did not fare as well professionally or financially as they would have if they had made the effort. This was one way in which I made a small dent in tackling systemic racism in one particular organization. Those to whom I stood up in the fight for equality and justice had the power to influence my career advancement and my earnings potential. But since I was one of a handful of black people in the organization in a position to make a difference, I felt that it was incumbent on me to take a stand on these critical issues, regardless of the cost to me personally. But I'm not a historical figure, nor am I a pioneer. And regrettably, I'm not engaged in any social activism in any meaningful way in our current divisive and fractured environment. So I want to shift focus to honoring and celebrating some historical figures who have gotten into good trouble fighting racism and social injustice. Because black women were credited for influencing the outcome of the November elections, I'm going to highlight the contributions of some pioneering black women with whom you may not be familiar but who have made a huge difference to make America a better place. Recognizing black women is also fitting because the theme of this year's Black History Month is the black family, 
representation, identity, and diversity. And the Black family has historically been matriarchal due to our history of separation during slavery, among other things. Have you heard of Maria Stewart? She is an African-American woman, but she is the first known American woman to speak to an interracial audience of men and women way back in the 1830s, a time when no woman, black or white, dared to address an audience from a public platform, let alone an audience comprised of black and white people gathered together in the same room. Her good trouble was to make anti-slavery speeches from these public platforms. How about Dorothy Height? She is known as the godmother of the women's movement. She was president of the National Council of Negro Women for 40 years and a leader in the YWCA. She used her background in education and social work to advance the rights of women. Her good trouble and contributions was working with private employers to hire people based on their skills, as opposed to discriminating against people because of their race. She also joined MLK in the 1963 March on Washington, where he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. Gwendolyn Brooks is another pioneer. She was the first Black author to win the Pulitzer Prize in 1950. She served as poetry consultant to the Library of Congress, becoming the first Black woman to hold that position, as well as being the poet laureate of the state of Illinois. Her good trouble was to produce work that reflected the political and social landscape of the 1960s, including the civil rights movement and the economic climate. There's Barbara Harris, the first Black woman to be ordained a bishop in the Episcopal Church in the United States. Her good trouble was challenging the Episcopal hierarchy to open its doors wider to women, black and gay people. She too was active in the civil rights movement. She traveled to Mississippi to register voters and marched with Martin Luther King from Selma to Montgomery. I could name several more, such as Maggie Lena Walker, one of the foremost business leaders in the United States. She was the first woman of any color to own a bank in the United States. And there's Bessie Coleman. Although history favored Amelia Earhart and the Wright brothers as pioneers of aviation, it excludes Coleman, who went to flight school in 1919 which, made, which distinguishes her as the first black licensed pilot in the world. She paved the way for a new generation of diverse flyers like the Tuskegee Airmen, the Blackbirds and the Flying Hobos. And lastly, but certainly not least, the one who is best known to, to many of us who stirred of plenty of good trouble is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Although his main purpose in coming to earth was to save the lost, in doing so, he often stirred up a lot of good trouble. According to many historical accounts, Jesus of Nazareth was a dark Asian Mediterranean Jewish man who is described in Isaiah 53 verse two as having no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. Based upon that description, if Jesus showed up in America today, he would probably have a rough go of, go of it with most Christians, conservative and liberal. One author describes him as being prickly with wealthy religious people of power and comfort. He also challenged those who regarded themselves as good. Jesus drew large crowds of the poor, overworked, underfed, marginalized, and oppressed, who often protested and rioted against injustice. This made him an irritating and subversive threat to the political and hypocritical religious establishment of his own people, 
such that they use their justice system to crucify him. And so my friends, I pray that we as Christians will have the courage to follow Jesus's example and never be afraid to make some noise and get into good trouble, necessary trouble. There comes a time in one's life when we have to stand, stand up for what is right and just. For good people of faith, it means getting in the way when injustice surfaces. Christians are often criticized for professing to love Jesus with our lips by being active in church. But once outside its doors, we deny Jesus by living a lifestyle in which we harbor racist and bigoted thoughts and feelings, often exhibiting such behaviors overtly or covertly. I hope this message will encourage you to do in February what the Bible says we should do year round. Perhaps we can each make a plan to get into at least a small amount of good trouble during Black History Month and beyond to do our part to reverse the racial divide in our country. A good place to begin is with the exhortations from the scriptures on how to live at peace with each other. And I have identified a few verses to get us started. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 39. Love one another. John 13, 34, 1 Peter 1, 22, and John 3, 11. Live in harmony with one another. Romans 12, 16, 1 Peter 3, 8. Serve one another in love. Galatians 5.13, bear and carry each other's burdens, Galatians 5.2, encourage one another, Hebrews 3.11, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, Matthew 7.12 and Luke 6.31, also known as the golden rule. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 and Colossians 3.13. And so my brothers and sisters, if we all practice these principles, we will indeed make our church, our country, and this world a better place. Amen. <laughs>